Tennessee. Oh, I got a little girl who's been waiting. Promise that she's married. Mr. Kane. Hey there, how's it going? This is Highway 101 here, which goes from Southern California. Heading north up to the Bay Area and then uh, coming up here into Mendocino County. Just south is Ukiah. Just north is Willits, the town where I was raised. I am filming right here for a specific reason, which I will explain in just a second. So first, a very quick recap of my childhood. My parents were raised in Los Angeles. They both worked in the hospital. My father was a laboratory technician. My mom was a nurse. Working at a hospital where my dad worked, was a guy from Canada. That guy, I think, moved back to Canada, but my dad was in touch with him and my parents wanted to get out of Los Angeles. So this was before I was born. At some point, they decided, let's uh, do it. Let's head to Canada and uh, go get a job at the uh, hospital with the friend of my dad's. And so they did that move there in 1970 one or 1970 around then i was born there we lived there for two years and then they moved back to los angeles lived there for a couple of years and then did the escape from la once again moved to sonoma county just south of here and then my parents were looking at land in the area in general and they found a good piece of land outside of the town of willits just about two or three miles north of here. So we moved there when I was five years old. I spent my entire childhood there. When I was 15, then my parents got divorced. I moved with my dad down to the Bay Area and went to my last uh, two years of high school there. Graduated from Berkeley High School in 1989. And so I'm going to stop at the schools that I went to in Willits going to drive up there in just a second here. It is a Wednesday, so there will be kids in the school, so I can't, you know, stop and do a proper tour of the schools or anything, but I'll show you where I went to elementary, middle school, high school. So in elementary school, then I had three good friends. One of them, many of you know already, Abram. There was also Shane and another guy named Gabe. Gabe lived in this RV park down here. So uh, let's uh, get cruising here. Got the Honda CRV, get up to Willits, do a tour of a typical American, Northern California, small town. Also, I wanted to start here to just kind of show you the uh, landscape, give you an idea of uh, the uh, nice green forested hills here February 28th a nice sunny day today but rain is a coming tomorrow so I wanted to uh, get up there and do this tour while I have the chance on a very nice uh, warmish day all right let's get cruising get up to Willits so coming up here is Ridgewood grade the highest point on Highway 101. There you can see Ride the World Famous Skunk Train Next Exit, a kind of famous-ish thing here in Willits. Here we go, Ridgewood Summit. Elevation 1,953 feet. Around 600 meters. And then you head downhill here and have to take an exit to go to Willits, whereas this road used to just go right through the town, but a few years ago they created a bypass around the town. Burger King, Safeway, Taco Bell, McDonald's, Willits, next two exits. So here's the new bypass going straight. Gotta get off here, 
20 Highway West and Willits. So I filmed a video yesterday driving from Ukiah where I'm staying with family. Went over to the coast to Highway 1 and the town of Mendocino and then drove back to Willits on that Highway 20 that is mentioned right here and Fort Bragg over there. So that is a fun loop to do. And then a couple miles from here to get into the town of Willits. There you can see 101 South Ukiah. And here we are coming into Willits, city limit. Population 4,888. And on the right here, that building used to be where one of my all-time favorite Mexican restaurants was. It was called Adelita's. We would go there when I was a kid there was something in their beans that was just so tasty. Probably lots of pork fat or something, but uh, great Mexican food. They had arcade games like uh, maybe Joust or uh, Dig Dug, something like that. Classic 80s games. And then tragically, the owner's young daughter died who I think was named Maria, and so they changed the name of the restaurant to her name after that happened. So I think that it was Maria's after that, but uh, no longer there. So Willits is a small town, but it is very spread out. To actually walk from the first city limit sign there all the way to the other end, you're talking I don't know, a few miles. On the right here, it says, well, it's charter school, but that was the health club that uh, my family was all members of, and we would go there and play racquetball and swim in the pool and soak in the hot tubs and stuff like that. Okay, my school, middle school, was over here somewhere. Let's find it. Bechtel Grove. Okay, I think this is it. School, slow. Yep. There it is. So in fifth and sixth grade, then I had the same teacher, Mr. Meyer, and it was right around there, I think, straight ahead that door there. You can see Bechtel Grove Middle School. I don't want to go walking around there pointing a camera, but uh, the uh, school here was 5th, 6th, and 7th grades. I was only here for 5th and 6th grades. Pretty sure Abram and I both had the same teacher. Either way, we were hanging out a lot because we'd met earlier at uh, the other school that I will go to next in 2nd grade. So, of course, Loads and loads of memories here, playing sports on the uh, field there. Abram and I messing around. And then my other friends that I mentioned, Shane and Gabe. And so in seventh grade, my parents transferred me to a private school because I just kind of wanted to be somewhere different, so they were trying something else. And so I went to a uh, private Montessori school, which was up in Brook Trails for seventh grade, and then Abram skipped seventh grade 
we would still hang out. We were on the uh, same soccer team. Okay, I need to stop here and talk about the sign. And so Abram skipped seventh grade. High school was from eighth to twelfth grades, which is unusual. I'm assuming they've probably changed that now. But uh, at the time, the eighth graders at the high school were called rats. And so Abram skipped from sixth over seventh, went straight to the high school in eighth while I was in seventh grade at that uh, Montessori school. And then my parents arranged for me to skip eighth grade so that I would catch up with Abram and also not have to be a rat, which was great. Um, and so I will show the uh, high school as well. Let's uh, take a look at the sign and explain something here. So, the uh, arch sign is the old sign that was in Reno. It used to say the biggest little city in the world or in the United States or whatever. So you can see it says Willits. They made a new sign, obviously. Heart of Mendocino County. Now, that is kind of debatable because it would kind of make more sense for Ukiah to be the heart of Mendocino County when it is the largest town and the county seat, the capital of the county. Maybe Willits is slightly more centrally located in the county or something. But also, gateway to the Redwoods, that is especially dubious because the Redwoods are a long ways north. Well, there's Redwoods around various Redwood groves. As I showed in my last video, driving over to the coast, but really the Redwoods are quite a bit further north. You could say more like Eureka or Arcata or maybe Garberville are more of the gateway to the Redwoods. So, kind of silly, but uh, whatever. Willis Arch, dedicated July 1st, 1995. A gift, okay, I hadn't realized it was a gift, from the city of Reno, Nevada, to the city of Willits, California in 1990. This arch towered over Reno's Virginia Street from 1964 to 1987, welcoming people, there we go, to the biggest little city in the world. And so here is the Safeway supermarket where my family would shop. And then, let's head over to the elementary school that I went to. So, let's see if I can find the school. Hey, my car! And Mariposa Market, that was here when I was a kid. Let's see if I can actually find my elementary school. And so Abram lived in Ukiah for, I think, a year before coming up here. In, I guess, kindergarten or first grade, and then we met in second grade, we had the same class at the school that I'm heading towards. Here is the Grange Hall Community Center. Oh, now it says Willett School. So I'm not sure what that is, but uh, there's a large uh, room in there where there would be various community events, one of which was a play that my mom was in. It was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. My mom was Nurse Ratchet, the like kind of evil nurse in the movie with Jack Nicholson. 
so memories that are coming to mind from here are trick-or-treating for Halloween and then walking from school. Okay, I think we're getting there. Yeah, this is all familiar. All right, so we're almost to the school. So usually I would catch the bus right from the school, but sometimes I would be walking like maybe over to the hospital where my parents worked or uh, something else, go to the health club go to friends' houses, whatever. So, the uh, memory that I'm going to mention from here, actually two come to mind. First, I was in kindergarten, which was there on the right, and there was an earthquake. I remember boxes falling off the shelves. So, there you go, Brookside Elementary. Same building, everything. The buses pull up here in that lane. And then another one is from before I even started school. My dad drove me over here and showed me the school and said, this is where you're gonna be going to kindergarten. So that would have been like summer of, let's see. I would have been five, so 77. Summer of 1977, Brookside Drive. Okay, now let's head over to the high school where the memories get more interesting. Commercial Street. Back when I was here, up ahead, was the only stoplight in town. Now there are more. Up on the right, no idea if it's still there, was Landmark Bakery, a popular bakery, where there were also live shows. There was a room in the back. And wow, I wasn't sure if it would still be here, but TNT Market, an old looking sign, it is exactly the same right there. So they had arcade games in there, like I was mentioning at the Adelita's Mexican restaurant, but they had a bunch more. And so we would go there and play uh, games. Oh, so that place that says pizza or no, maybe it was over here. One of these businesses right there was Abrams Burrito Shop, Burrito Exquisito. Back in the 90s, Abram and his uh, older brother, Chris, started this uh, burrito shop there. Not sure how long they owned it for, a few years, and then they sold it to somebody else. And ahead you can see the Noyo Theater, One Love, and Madam Webb. Is One Love a Bob Marley movie? Certainly sounds like it. Okay, going left here. So as I mentioned in the last video, Ukiah has more screens. There at our theater, there was just one. So we would often go down to Ukiah to uh, see movies. There, 101 drive-in, good uh, burger and fast food place. <laughs> okay, the memory starts. This place, I forget what it was called at the time when I was in high school, there was some other kind of restaurant there. Here is Sherwood Road, which goes up to my house and I will drive up there. So, Abram and I decided to walk through the drive-through and try to order food at that place because there was like a drive-through on the back. I don't know why we didn't just walk in. They might have been like closed except for the drive through something like that. And so we pressed the thing, or no, I forget exactly how it went down, but uh, I don't know if we ever even got to the point of ordering, but the guy sticks his head out and says like, get out of here, basically something like that. So totally didn't work. Okay, Willits High School here. Home of the Wolverines. 
Wolverines. Pretty cool mascot. Wolverines are very ferocious creatures. So you have the pool here. I learned to uh, swim at that pool. I think it's the community pool. And then also for the high school. I took wrestling in that building right there. Let's hop out, see if we can wander around a little bit. So there you can see it says Willett City Pool. This was the gym. Lots happened inside there. This was the room where wrestling class happened. And then uh, tennis courts over there. I played tennis. Here you had softball, baseball out there, the uh, main field, football games. Let's see what happens here if I get kicked out eventually. So, uh, basketball hoop there reminds me back at uh, Brookside Elementary School, the uh, first school then, one of our pastimes during the uh, recesses was playing basketball, but we didn't do so much actually playing basketball as we would just shoot and try to make the craziest shots we could make, you know, from way far away or bouncing it in or whatever. So, one of the uh, funniest stories from my time here with Abram. There's the library. I think that is it actually right there. Yes. So we spent lots of time in the library. And at one point, Abram and I got kicked out. Now I forget the exact circumstances. I think it was basically something that Abram did but I was associated with him and I was sitting next to him and they thought that both of us were involved. I don't remember, it was like making some noise or something. It might have been, you know, the second or third time they'd warned us or something like that. But uh, we got kicked out and banned from the library for maybe the rest of the year or maybe it was just a few weeks or something. I forget, maybe it was like two weeks or something. But uh, in protest, then every morning around the time a little bit before classes were about to start we would stand at this window there was like a uh, entrance going in a door right here and then it went into like an enclosed area and then you took a right into the actual door that went into the library and so there were windows on this sort of entrance area and we would stand at the window on the outside with our tongues against the window and just stand there like around the time that everyone was leaving and so there would just be this line of everyone leaving the library to go to their classes and we would just stand there with our tongues on the window for like five or ten minutes or whatever in protest and then i guess eventually we were allowed back in the library i forget there but uh abram and i shaved our eyebrows Maybe that was at our, one of our houses, I forget, but uh, it was kind of emulating the Pink Floyd movie, The Wall, because uh, Pink, the main character in the movie, shaves his eyebrows at one point. The basis of that, we kind of came up with the idea, and then we were unsure whether we should go ahead with it, and so we agreed that if either one of us did do it and the other one didn't do it, then... The one who didn't do it would owe the other guy five bucks. So if Abram did it and I didn't do it, then I would owe him five dollars. And so that kind of gave us incentive to both do it. And then eventually, of course, they grew back. I could certainly go on and on telling various uh, stories from high school. It would certainly take a bit of digging to uh, remember all that transpired here in just the two years that I was here, ninth and 10th grade, and then 11th grade, I moved down to the Bay Area. Went to Skyline High School in Oakland because my dad had moved to uh, Montclair in Oakland. 
Skyline High School, where Tom Hanks went to high school. And then, uh, for various reasons, I was kind of in with the wrong crowd. Then my dad decided to change me over to Berkeley High School and uh, graduated from there. And then, as I've mentioned before, Trey Cool, the drummer for Green Day, went to Willits High School as well and was in my group of friends. And we all hung out along with Abram and Abram's older brother, Chris, and uh, the uh, stories of where various people went on with their lives after Willits High School are pretty wild, including this one guy, Andy, who got in a surfing accident and almost died or something, and then he survived, but he had sort of a spiritual epiphany, and for some reason, this resulted in him moving to Alaska and becoming a Russian Orthodox monk. And a friend of mine showed me a photo of him once, and a uh, big, long, gray beard, like totally looked, you know, straight out of Russia or something. All right, now let's head up Sherwood Road and go to the area where I was raised. I'm not gonna go to the house. Somebody else, of course, lives there now, but to uh, so the area there, including where I first learned to hitchhike. Sherwood Road, Brook Trails, airport, four miles. So high school right there. And then as I talked about in my last video, how I started hitchhiking as a kid up our dirt road, which I will be showing. And then later in high school, I started hitchhiking all the way home from town. And so I would just walk across the street and stand there, stick out my thumb, and eventually get a ride. which involves about a three mile drive up this road and then you turn onto a dirt road. So across there, might be hard to see, there is a big W for Willits. So there have been a lot of crazy, tragic stories coming out of this little town. One that comes to mind is a guy in high school, Jason Strong. I think he was maybe a year older than me anyways. This was in, I forget, when I was in ninth or 10th grade anyways. And uh, he was driving himself to school driving down this road and somewhere along it a tree randomly fell across the road crushed his car killed him instantly imagine the you know timing on that you brush your teeth for two seconds longer and it doesn't happen you know just such a bizarre freaky thing Willits was the site of the fastest shootout in the West, apparently. Back in the real cowboy days, there was some shootout in which like six people got killed in a minute or something like that. So this is Brook Trails. As you can see, very nice uh, forested area. Abram lived up here, and I'm going to show you his house. Now, the only reason that I'm going to show it to you is because his parents sold it and moved away just recently, like last year or something. But uh, if they were still living there, I wouldn't show it for their privacy. But uh, let's go take a look. And I have been there maybe like 10 years ago or so, no, not that long ago, I think in 2015. Here's a photo with 
Abram and another friend of ours, John, who we also went to school with. And we all met at Abram's house. And then we went on a uh, drive up north, out to Covalo. Kind of random, just a uh, little day trip. So here, Sherwood Market. That opened at some point after we had moved here a few years later, and it was really a revelation for us because it meant that we could get stuff without having to uh, drive all the way into town, save, you know, just a few minutes, but it was a shorter drive from where I lived. And they also had uh, VHS tapes, movies, so we could just pop down there, grab a movie, get some ice cream or whatever. All right, so we are getting close to Abram's house. So up here on the left, Abram's family's house. They moved here, I guess, when they first moved to Willits, so a year or two after my family did. That's it right there. So I spent a lot of time in that house. I would regularly go stay over the night. We would play computer games, have all kinds of adventures in the trees around here. Abram's family was Mormon, is Mormon, and so they had seminary in the morning, so I would stay the night and then go to seminary with them. Here is the airport, the Willits Airport. My dad got his pilot's license. Once we went to visit my grandparents in Bishop, near Bishop, California, over the Sierras, and I guess we must have taken off from here. I forget if it was here or maybe Ukiah, but I think probably here. And so uh, we flew there over the Sierras. It was spectacular, but also painful because uh, no pressurization in a little four-seater plane. And I remember our ears just like bursting. There it is again. So his parents moved to Oregon. All right, so I'm now going to continue straight down here, get back to the Sherwood Road, and then get up to where I lived. So we've left the Brook Trails area behind, and it gets a little more wild up here. Classic old barn and uh, farmhouse. And then there are various roads that connect to Sherwood Road here. I think all of which are dirt unless some of them have been paved since, but just up ahead is going to be our dirt road called Troll Ridge. That was kind of the informal name or Timberline Road. I'm going to uh, drive right past our driveway without revealing it for the sake of the person's privacy who now lives there. But uh, that's where our mailboxes were. Only one there. I guess maybe the uh, mail truck now goes up uh, the road and delivers there. That used to be a shortcut, but now gated. And then down here is where the bus would drop me. Going this way, so it would stop here drop me off and I would start the long walk if I wasn't getting a ride Timberline Road as you can see or as I mentioned in the last video and in my book following my film a decade of unabashed wanderlust link down below to my books then this is where I started hitchhiking not actually right here I will show you in just a second but uh, at some point when I was eight or nine or something like that, I decided rather than walking the whole way that I would just stop and wait for a neighbor, someone who was familiar to come along and get a ride with him. So the bus would drop me here. Maybe one of my parents would be here to uh, 
pick us up. Otherwise, we were on our own getting home. My brother would take a different bus. I don't recall us ever taking the same bus because he was a few years behind me. So I was always on my own making this walk. So when I started hitchhiking, then rather than hitchhiking down there at the bottom, I would walk up here and you'll start seeing the driveways going off to various properties. You don't see most of the houses from the road of the people who live out here. Mostly they are longish driveways. So here on the right driveway and there is the top of the shortcut. And so you would cut off just that little bit of the road if you came up the shortcut, which was open when I was a kid. But uh, somebody owns that uh, property and I guess they decided to uh, block it off. So driveway there, gated. And so right there is where I would wait. It was different then, less uh, trees and that's a madrone tree right there. The trees were smaller. I remember it being grassy right there. And so there was like a comfortable, soft, grassy spot in the sun to hang out and hope that somebody came along and got me home. Because from here, it's more than a mile further of a walk up this gravel road. And then this road continues past our driveway and reconnects with the Sherwood Road. So I will make that entire drive now. So another uh, house there, which you can see. And so there you can see multiple addresses, I guess four houses down there. Another driveway. And so this uh, road was originally constructed as a logging operation access road back in like the 40s or 50s. So they logged this whole area. And so when I was a kid, then it was still a couple decades or something uh, after the logging had happened, but the uh, trees were smaller. So this is the start of what my brother and I called Killer Hill because it is a big steep hill and there were less trees so it was less shaded and it was hot on a hot day. It was kind of exposed and so you're walking up this steep hill which doesn't look like that big of a deal now but at the time it just felt a lot bigger and longer. And so on the left here is another driveway down to one of my dad's friends. We would hang out there. Really cool homes out here. All, you know, built by the people who uh, moved onto the land mostly because it was raw land. And so they're all individual and, you know, just kind of classic mountain, sometimes kind of ramshackle style. Some more driveways. Very, you know, country feeling. There was really a community here. More driveways. knew, I'm sure basically everybody who lived out here, and then some were better friends than others, but uh, there would be community events. One guy had a sauna, we would go over there for potlucks every Sunday evening and do saunas. Ooh, lucky us, we got to see a deer. Nice. There it is, looking back at us. That is awesome.
so it was really a pretty ultimate childhood. Of course, no childhood is perfect, but uh, it was about as good as it gets to live up here, have these forests to explore, have interesting neighbors, be immersed in nature, and have a childhood of, you know, some ruggedness of chopping wood. Our house uh, didn't have regular electricity. We weren't connected to the electrical grid. We had 12 volt instead of the usual 120 volt. So basically like that powered electric lighting, which we actually got later, we just had like gas lighting lamps before that. And then we got the electricity and got the electric lighting and then we had a stereo system that worked on the 12 volt, but our TV did not work with 12 volt. And so we had a generator away from the house that you had to start up to get the 120 volt electricity going so that we could watch the movies. As I mentioned, that uh, store, then we would have to go start up the generator, which involved like cranking it. And then the scary part was after we'd watched the movie, then either my brother or I, I think it like alternated, would have to uh, go back to the generator to turn it off. And of course, after watching movie, it's dark out. And it was a few minutes, it wasn't right next to the, house. It was a little ways away. Okay, so I'm trying to decide whether to go down Middle Earth or Timberline. Both will work. I forget, but uh, let's just go straight, I guess. Actually, I might want to go back down Middle Earth, but uh, let's go out this way a little bit. And so it was kind of a freaky experience having to leave the, you know, brightly lit, warm house, go out into the cold, dark woods, and then you go down this path and get to the shed and the generator is roaring away and then have to turn it off and then get back to the house. Just as a kid walking through the woods in the dark, your imagination goes wild. So there were a lot of, you know, really amazing parts of it. There were challenges, of course, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for a thing. And so the short version of how we ended up here is my uh, parents were looking around for land to buy and ended up in Willits, somehow found out about uh, this area and the uh, lots that were available and bought the land, 40 acres off of this road. I passed the driveway but didn't point it out. And there was absolutely nothing on it, just, you know, the trees that were growing back. So, my dad didn't have much in the way of construction experience, but he learned. And uh, my mom and dad got started building a house and built this big, awesome wooden house, which took many years to uh, complete. So we had an outhouse at first, no working bathroom, outhouse down a hill, a, uh, you know, one minute walk from the house or whatever. And then later a friend moved on the land and built this little cabin. And then my dad built a big woodshed and we dug out a lake. And so we, you know, made various improvements over the course of the 10 years that uh, the whole family was living there. We had orchards with different fruit trees, we had a garden, we would cut wood from trees on the land for our wood stove. We didn't have gas heating or electric heating 
but uh, just a wood stove. Hey, more wildlife. experience and it's great to see that uh, 40 years later not a whole lot has changed it's still a dirt road I think they have electricity yes there we go power lines those weren't here at the time I'm sure they got internet but uh, other than that still dirt road Lots of trees. Classic uh, wooden homes. Still nice and quiet out here. Haven't passed a single car on this road yet. And in just a second, we'll get back to Sherwood Road and that other road that I passed, Middle Earth. I think it connects to this road or maybe that's it there okay. right over there is the paved Sherwood Road so let's just drive out that way a couple minutes so uh, right up ahead here this junction was called double culverts a very practical name. Okay, there we go. Middle Earth Road there. And so, that is a culvert, that big pipe sticking out of the uh, dirt for the creek to flow through under the road. And I guess there were two of them. Maybe now there's only one Maybe they replaced it with one big one or something, but there used to be two. And so, if you wanted to meet somebody here, you would say, see a double courts. All right, let's uh, head a little bit further up Sherwood Road. So I just drove a couple of miles further up Sherwood Road to the R Horse Ranch. And in the process, I realized that I got something wrong. So this is as far as the bus would go. It would drive here, turn around, and then go back. And in the process I remembered, the bus did not pull over and drop me off going this way, and then I would cross the road because they thought that that was unsafe, which it kind of was. So I would have to ride the bus all the way here, and then it would pull in here, back in, and then turn around and go that way. Right here, I'm pretty sure the pavement stopped and it was then dirt going further up the road which eventually goes back to highway 101 but it is a long ways uh, further going that way so anyone who lived further up there their parents would have to like drive here and pick them up or whatever and so i don't know that i've ever been back up that way lots of mailboxes so lots of houses back in there and so i'm going to uh drive back to town and end with uh, just showing a bit more of this road and some of the uh, roads along the way which are where more friends of my parents lived and so I have various memories of driving out here to go visit various people to go to parties I remember a guy who had a pond we would go there and swim the guy's name was Kirk, he made wood stoves. He made our wood stove, and it said Kirk on it. And we also went out there to watch the Super Bowl once, back in like the mid 80s when Joe Montana was the quarterback. And so there you can see it says Third Gate. So there's a series of three different roads here. First gate, second gate, and third gate. And so you drive out there and it goes back in there a ways to many more, you know, country homes, hippie houses. I had friends that lived back in there and uh, 
there was a lot for us to do without necessarily going into town, being out here, having all this uh, community around us. And so I remember it being kind of an annoyance when I was a kid, having to stay on the bus, go all the way out there, wait, you know, to stop and drop kids off along the way, and then turn around. And I think that I was the last kid. Yeah, I think so. And so I was always alone on the bus at the end. And so here on the right is the uh, double culverts again. And then we'll get to Second Gate and First Gate and Hobbit Hill. And then it's our road, Troll Ridge. So that's Second Gate, I think. A pretty cool place to grow up. Beats living in the middle of the concrete jungle of the city. I'm glad that my parents got out of Los Angeles. A pretty ideal life out here. All right, that is going to do it. So the weather is about to change. The next uh, several days it's going to be rainy, so I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing some travel planning, that is for sure, and trying to decide what the heck I'm going to do next because it is getting on time for me to make a move sometime soon. That might be first gate there. So, uh, who knows where I will be next, but more videos coming from somewhere. See ya.